Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for how long I've been gone, and I apologize that this is going to be a fairly terse review, but I'm going to try to hit all the major points I'm trying to hit. I'm basically in the middle of filling out the paperwork for security clearance, and it's been uh, trying. So, before we get into the book, let's first go over the three things I always go over. The views, critiques, and thoughts expressed in this video are my own. I ask everyone to grab a copy of this book themselves and form their own opinions. What I like, others may not like, and what I like, others may not. It's all subjective and it's all based on taste. Second, if you would like to read or critique any of my own work, I have a link in the description and I welcome all opinions and criticisms. If I can dish it out, I had better be able to take it. Third, if you like what I do, please like and share these reviews. It's a good way to get other authors' names out there, and it encourages me to continue doing what I'm doing. And with that out of the way, let's get into our review of Dawn of the Black Sun by Timo Birmham. And I know I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And Timo has told me how he likes me to do these uh, recaps fairly brief, so I'm going to try to do this as briefly as I can. So, we start with our main character, Ryo, who is an innocent young fisher boy living an idyllic life in his village with only two huts. He lives with his father and mother and his young but strangely clever sister, and in the other hut is his girlfriend and her parents. One day, when he and his girlfriend were staring awkwardly into each other's eyes, he was asked to come inside and basically meet the folks. Well, the father gives the boy a hard time and in the end basically tells him, I look forward to you being my son-in-law because there's so many other options in this village with only two huts. Ryu, however, is elated because he not only has a crush on this girl, she's probably the only girl he's ever seen. And just as he's about to leave, they're greeted at the door by a bunch of bandits, one of which has a scar going across his eye. <laughs> because this is going to end well. They quickly murder the girl's father and then knock Ryo out so he can't witness the absolutely horrible crap they're about to do. And it's about to get Game of Thrones level in here. But luckily, Ryu misses the actual acts themselves, and wakes up as the hut is on fire because these guys have had their fun and they're on their way somewhere else. After seeing a bunch of stuff that is certainly not safe for YouTube, and I will not go over, Ryu tearfully buries his family and his girlfriend in nearby graves as quickly as promptly as his 17-year-old arms can do so. After sleeping outside because all the shelter in the village was burned down except for a fishing hut, which was obviously too difficult to get to, Ryu decides he's going to have revenge, and so picking up his favorite fish gutting knife and some food out of a nearby barrel that wasn't burned or raided, he sets off into the woods, tracking down the bandits who are too stupid to hide where they were going. Finding their camp, about a day's journey out from where he started, he starts to plot and plan his attack, decides he's going to attack them in broad daylight, steps out from behind the tree he was hiding on, and promptly crushes a stick, alerting everyone to his presence. They capture him and are about to give him the Isis smile when the Master appears. And that's where I'm going to leave off the recap. I hope you found that as colorful and traumatizing as I did, and if you didn't, please read the book. So I'm going to start with my likes. And it might be because I like anime that I liked this, because I'm finding I like martial arts stories. It's full of fighting and mysticism and weird key-like powers, except in this they call it Hyo, which mm, I'm sure there's a reason behind it. Never heard it before. It felt kind of weird. I also like Zash, who is the master who appears and the master who does train Ryu for some parts of the beginning of the book and leads him on the journey that will take the bulk of the book. Zash is kind of a reluctant master. He's probably my favorite character in the series. He's, well, at least my favorite character in the book. He's a very reluctant teacher, and he's haunted by some fairly common problems that you wouldn't associate with someone who basically can shoot lightning from his palms. He's also very unsure of himself. In his own mind, he thinks of himself as an unworthy teacher and compares himself often to his, well, compares himself often to his own teacher. One of the things I really did like about him is that he was constantly trying to dissuade Ryu from following the same path he was on. He knew Ryu was upset and that he wanted revenge and wanted to be able to protect other people, but Zash also knew what was waiting for him if he followed the path that Zash followed, and he just didn't want to see that happen to the boy. There's also another story which I think is one of the highlights of the book, and we're going to call it the B story, oddly enough, even though it's a main feature of the book and it's where the book starts. And that's the story with the Exile. This Exile finds a sort of demonic, chaotic sword after killing somebody else in this wastelands that he's 
kind of banished to. Well, when he picks up the weapon, it turns out that it's possessed. Surprise, surprise, you find some weird black blade that talks to people and it's possessed. Well, the two strike a mutual accord and decide to work together for the betterment of each other because the weapon doesn't want to be left out in the sandstorm, and the guy likes the unnatural strength the sword is giving him, especially in a desert where he's constantly thirsty and hungry and things are constantly trying to kill him. And that begins their slow story as this guy tries to basically bring downfall to the nation that sent him there. And there's a whole rigmarole and a whole story there. It's a fun little story. I'm not going to ruin that for you. All in all, the characters in this book feel different. I like that. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. They don't feel like the same characters over and over again. I could almost tell them apart by their dialogue. Which says something, because there's been a number of books I've read where the characters feel remarkably indistinguishable. But with likes come dislikes, and I want to go ahead and get these out of the way. So the first thing I want to say is the sentences in this book could have been tighter. The prose are a little bit loose. There's a lot of unneeded words, a lot of uh, seams and hads and things that just slow down the pace in the story. I'm finding myself to be a bit more sensitive to these things after spending a lot of time doing some research on prose. But these need to be a little bit tighter. There's some areas where three or four words could have been replaced with a single word, and maybe it's just because I've been training at it that I noticed it. It really didn't take much away from the story, it just slowed it down. The next thing I didn't like is the power scaling, but this is kind of a yes or no thing. It's not a big issue. They have a key-like energy they called Hyo, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, as I do with many Asian things. And it's sort of an energy they use for fighting, but it's not entirely used for that. They can fight without it, but it's, it's kind of a key-based energy that you would see kind of dime a dozen in a lot of different other animes. But it works a lot more with this world with the mysticism. But my problem with it is that Ryu goes on a quest without spoiling anything, which amps up his Hyo. And I feel like it gave him a bit much, like a lot much, like it eliminated a major obstacle for him. And I feel it took a bit of the struggle out of his story. Now, that's not to say it took all the struggle out of his story, because where he's going, he's not going to be tested on this spiritual power, at least not to get in. He's going to be tested on whether or not he can beat the crap out of somebody, something he is sorely lacking in the ability to do. So let's move on to my thoughts. Overall, I don't have much to complain about with this story. I enjoyed it from beginning to end, though it did drag a little bit in places and mostly that was just due to some sentence structure I'm just now noticing, which feels kind of unfair because I'm pretty sure I've read other books that had similar problems, but I didn't notice it then, but I'm noticing it now. But the story did still keep me entertained. And I will probably look into the next book when it comes out because these aren't terribly long. This one wasn't a terribly long story. I do enjoy a short story because it lets me know that usually people have put a bit more thought into them. That's not to say there aren't good long stories out there. Some of my favorite books are ridiculously long. But usually when I pick up a short story, even if it's not going to be very good, I know I'm going to be able to get all the way to the end. But with this, I actually enjoyed the story. The pace was a little bit slow, but this is the start of a series. So that's not really too unexpected. Another thing that's really bugging me, though, is... And I can't really count this as a dislike, but more of something that threw me off. So, as I mentioned in my recap of the story itself, there were some results that were very un-YouTube friendly. And uh, to, to give you an example, think uh, first episode of Goblin Slayer. There's some really dark stuff that happened, and I don't feel like that tone continued through the rest of the book. I feel like I was set up for a different story. It wasn't a jarring thing, but it certainly, uh, it certainly set a different tone than that, than the tone I went through. Let's put it that way. Um, it certainly did, <laughs> certainly didn't make you empathize with the villains, but I just feel like it was, um, either the second half was a bit tamer or the first half needed a little bit of toning down. But this is a petty complaint. It was just something that caught me off guard. I was preparing for a much darker story than what I got. And there's still other books to come. It could still be a very dark story. It doesn't skimp on the gore. There's still a lot of gore and blood. But the beginning was, uh, hmm. Yeah, it's it was enough to really make me mention it. It stuck with me. As for beginnings, 
it was pretty good. If the sentences were tighter, if it was a little bit briefer, it would have been a very, very powerful opening. It would have just stuck with you through the whole book. You'd have been like, oh my gosh, look at these horrible things that are going on. I have to keep reading. But as it is, it's still a very strong opening. Uh, The last thing on my thoughts is the main character himself, Ryu, because he's kind of a hard character to gauge. He feels very blank slate, and that might be intentional. It might not be intentional. It's hard to say. He doesn't have too much of a personality of his own outside of being sad that his family died and being stubborn to make sure nobody else has to suffer through the same thing. So I'm really not sure what to make of the boy. I do have some thoughts about the ending, but I, hmm. On the one hand, I, without spoiling anything, and I really don't want to spoil anything here because it's definitely a story that's worth your time, and it's it's not going to take up much of your time. You probably read this in an afternoon if you put your mind to it. So the ending is satisfying, but almost like there could have been a little bit more to it. I can, I've certainly seen worse endings, and I could have... I thought of a dozen ways this could have ended much worse than it did. In fact, the ending itself felt pretty strong, but it doesn't feel as strong as it needed to be, as the beginning of this book set me out to believe it was going to be. Maybe that just gets back to my thoughts on the beginning again. The beginning and the end don't really match. One is grim dark, and the other one is hopeful defiance. It's... Two things that don't feel like they quite go together, like two puzzle pieces that almost match, but not quite. There's still some niggling little bit there. But hey, what's a book without a little bit of contrast and mismatch? And with that, I will wish you all good luck. Thank you for listening. If you have any books you'd like me to review, or you yourself are an author and would like me to review your work, please leave a link down in the description. And remember, please keep the conversation in the comments civil. If you'd like to critique my own work, you can find links in the description. I welcome all comments, all criticism, even if you didn't like it.